Welcome to this compilation video where we dive into the wild and often shocking world of freak accidents, murder, and bizarre deaths. We've scoured our footage to bring you some of the most unbelievable stories from our 2023 and 2024 videos. If you think you've seen it all, think again. This collection is packed with jaw-dropping clips that will leave you both stunned and intrigued. So buckle up and let's jump into it. Trevor Burbick was a professional boxer who competed from 1976 to 2000. He won the WBC heavyweight title in 1986 by defeating Pinklon Thomas, then lost it in his first defense that same year to Mike Tyson. Burbick was the last boxer to fight Muhammad Ali, defeating him in 1981 by unanimous decision. On the 28th of October, 2006, Burbick was murdered at a church in Norwich, Jamaica by two assailants wielding a steel pipe. He sustained repeated blows to the head and died at the scene. Police arrested two men, one of whom was Burbick's 20-year-old nephew, Harold Burbick. Apparently, they were involved in a land dispute. Both men were charged with his murder and sentenced to life in prison. Eddie Hassel was born on July 16, 1990 in Corsicana, Texas, USA. He is known for The Kids Are All Right, 2010, Surface, 2005, and the 2013 film Jobs, where he played the young Chris Espinosa. Hassel was shot dead during a carjacking after leaving his girlfriend's house on November 1, 2020, around 1.50 a.m. in Grand Prairie, Texas, in what police describe as a random robbery. He was 30 years old. Police arrested an 18-year-old man within days of the incident and charged him with murder. David Huffman, an immensely talented American leading and supporting actor on film and television in the 1970s and 80s, had his life cut tragically short. On February 27, 1985, tragedy struck when David Huffman lost his life at the age of 39. He was involved in a fatal altercation with a 16-year-old at a San Diego park that ended in him being stabbed to death with a screwdriver. Bob Saget was an American stand-up comedian, actor, and television host. He portrayed Danny Tanner on the sitcom Full House from 1987 to 1995 and its sequel Fuller House from 2016 to 2020 and was the original host of America's Funniest Home Videos from 1989 to 1997 and the voice of narrator Ted Mosby on the sitcom How I Met Your Mother. Bob Saget, Death by Nightstand Table. On January 9, 2022, Saget was found dead in his room at a Ritz-Carlton hotel near Williamsburg in Orange County, Florida. An autopsy report released on February 9th found that he had blunt head trauma from an accidental blow to the back of his head, most likely from falling backwards and hitting his head on the nightstand table. Jennifer Helene Maxwell was an American film and television actress, probably best remembered for starring alongside Elvis Presley in the 1961 film Blue Hawaii. In the afternoon of June 10, 1981, shortly after her separation from Irvin Roeder, a successful attorney, Maxwell and Roeder were shot and killed in the lobby of Maxwell's Beverly Hills condo. She was 39 years old. The shooting was believed to be a botched hit on Maxwell, orchestrated by Roeder over pending divorce finances. Roeder, a defense attorney with reputed mafia connections, had allegedly arranged to receive a survivable wound from the hitman as a diversion. But in the event, the wound to his abdomen proved fatal and he died a few hours after the shooting. Marie Trintignant, a remarkable French film and stage actress, she graced the silver screen in over 30 movies, captivating audiences with her talent and charisma. On the 26th of July, while in a hotel room, her rock star boyfriend, Bertrand Cantat, flew into a jealous rage during an argument over a text message sent to Trintignant by her husband, from whom she was separated. Cantat proceeded to severely beat Trintignant she died from swelling of the brain at the age of 41 on August 1, 2003. Her rock star boyfriend would only serve four years in prison before being released. Payne Stewart was an American professional golfer who won 11 PGA Tour events, including three major championships, the last of which came just a few months before his tragic accident at the age of 42. Payne Stewart, Death by Cabin Decompression. On October 25, 1999, a private jet took off from Orlando International Airport for Texas with the reigning U.S. Open golf champion Payne Stewart on board. It never reached its destination. The aircraft plunged from the sky, killing its two pilots and four passengers. The jet crashed after the cabin depressurized, 
starving the occupants of oxygen. Fighter jets were scrambled and tracked the flight, but were powerless to intervene. Diane Fossey, an American primatologist and conservationist, dedicated her life to the study and protection of mountain gorillas, conducting groundbreaking research in the mountain forests of Rwanda. Gorillas in the Mist was a movie made about her life. In the early morning of December 27, 1985, Fossey was discovered murdered in the bedroom of her cabin located at the far edge of the camp in the Virunga Mountains, Rwanda. It is widely believed that she was killed in connection with her lifelong crusade against poaching. Christy Schoencod was a Spanish-born chef who came to prominence as a contestant in the eighth season of the Food Network series, Food Network Star. She started a successful movie catering business and was known as the Hollywood chef to the stars. Christy and her husband Joseph were reported missing on March 15, 2015, when their family was unable to reach them. An investigation by police led to the arrest of local contractor and neighbor Robert Jason Owens, who was charged with their murders. Gregory Plitt, an actor and fitness model, Plitt gained recognition for his role in the Bravo television series Workout. Gregory Plitt, Death by Locomotive. Tragedy struck in Burbank, California on January 17, 2015, when Plitt's life was cut short at the young age of 37. While filming an energy drink video at the train station, Plitt, while apparently trying to outrun the train and jump across the tracks, was run over and killed by a train locomotive. Phil Hartman joined the NBC sketch comedy show Saturday Night Live as a cast member and stayed for eight seasons until 1994. Nicknamed Glue for his ability to hold the show together and help other cast members, he won a Primetime Emmy Award for his SNL work in 1989. He also starred as Bill McNeil in the sitcom News Radio. On May 27, 1998, Hartman's wife, Bryn, visited the Italian restaurant Buca di Beppo in Encino, California, with producer and writer Christine Zander, who said she was in a good frame of mind. They had drinks. After returning home, Bryn and Hartman had a heated argument, after which he went to bed. She entered his bedroom sometime before 3 o'clock in the morning on May 28, 1998, and as he slept, she fatally shot him. She then took her own life. Rebecca Schaefer was a well-known model and actress. She began her career by modeling when she was a teenager and later transitioned into the acting industry. In 1986, she landed the role of Patricia Patty Russell in the CBS comedy My Sister Sam. She was shot and died when she was 21 years old by Robert John Bardo, a 19-year-old crazy fan who had been stalking her. Schaefer's death helped lead to the passage in California of legislation aimed at preventing stalking. Glenn Shadix was an American actor and comedian. He was known for his role as Otho in Tim Burton's horror comedy film Beetlejuice and as the voice of the mayor of Halloween Town in The Nightmare Before Christmas. Glenn Shadix, Death by Kitchen Sink. On September 7, 2010, according to Glenn's sister Susan Genya, he tripped and fell in the kitchen at his condominium. Hitting his head on the sink, he died of blunt trauma to his head. Lloyd Avery's breakout role was in John Singleton's Oscar-nominated film Boys in the Hood, 1991. In 2001, soon after wrapping his latest movie, Avery was arrested and charged with a double homicide for shooting two random people, for which he was sentenced to life in prison. He was murdered on September 4, 2005 in Crescent City, California at the age of 36. He was beaten and strangled by his cellmate at the Pelican Bay State Prison. Eva Judith Barcy was an American child actress. She started her career in commercials, TV shows, and the movie Jaws the Revenge. She voiced Ducky in The Land Before Time and Anne Marie in All Dogs Go to Heaven. A network talent scout found her at a San Fernando Valley skating rink at the age of five. Her father, who obviously had mental issues, shot her and her mother on July 25, 1988, then shot himself. Joe Spinell was an American character actor who appeared in films in the 1970s and 80s, best known for his supporting roles in The Godfather, 1972, and The Godfather Part II, 1974, and Rocky and Taxi Driver both in 1976. Joe Spinell, Death by Glass Shower Door. Spinell died in his apartment on January 13, 1989, at the age of 52. Sometime during that morning, he cut himself really bad on his glass shower stall door after apparently slipping in the bathtub while showering. 
Soon afterward, he fell asleep on his living room couch instead of calling for help, and he bled to death. Hector Camacho, commonly known by his nickname Macho Camacho, was a professional boxer. Camacho competed professionally from 1980 to 2010 and was a world champion in three weight classes. He held the WBC Super Featherweight title from 1983 to 1984, the WBC Lightweight title from 1985 to 1987, and the WBO Junior Welterweight title twice between 1989 and 1992. On November 20th, 2012, around 7 p.m., 50-year-old Camacho was shot once in the jaw while sitting in a car on Puerto Rico Highway 167 in Bayamon. Camacho was seated in the passenger seat of a friend's Ford Mustang when he was shot by unknown individuals from a passing SUV. The driver of the car, Adrian Mojica Moreno, Camacho's childhood friend, also died in the attack. Camacho would die later that night in the hospital. No one was ever arrested. Helena Hutchins was a Ukrainian cinematographer. She worked on more than 30 feature-length films, short films, and TV miniseries, including the films Arch Enemy, Darlin, and Blind Fire. She died in a tragic freak accident that should have never happened. Helena Hutchins, Death by Alex Baldwin. On October 21, 2021, Hutchins was working as director of photography on the set of the Western film Rust, near La Cienega, New Mexico. While preparing for a scene, actor Alec Baldwin discharged a Pieta 45 Colt revolver used as a prop, fatally wounding her. She died while being transferred to the University of New Mexico Hospital in Albuquerque. She was 42 years old. Bob Crane was best known for starring in the CBS hit comedy series, Hogan's Heroes. But he also hosted the number one rated morning radio show in the early 1960s, before landing the lead role of Colonel Robert Hogan in Hogan's Heroes. The series aired from 1965 to 1971. In June 1978, Crane was living in the Winfield Place Apartments in Scottsdale, Arizona, during a run of Beginner's Luck at the Windmill Dinner Theater. On the afternoon of June 29th, his co-star Victoria Ann Barry entered his apartment after he failed to show up for a lunch meeting and discovered his body. Crane had been bludgeoned to death with a weapon that was never identified, though investigators believed it to be a camera tripod. A former friend, John Henry Carpenter, was charged with his murder but was acquitted. Steve McNair, known as Air McNair, was a highly accomplished professional football player, primarily recognized for his exceptional skills as a quarterback in the National Football League, NFL. He dedicated 13 seasons to the sport, notably playing for the Houston Oilers before their relocation to Nashville, where they became the Tennessee Oilers. After a successful career, Steve McNair retired from professional football following the conclusion of the 2007 NFL season. On July 4, 2009, the world was shocked by the tragic and untimely death of Steve McNair. At the young age of 36, his life was cut short in a devastating incident that left many grieving. It is a heartbreaking story that unfolded when his girlfriend, Saleh Kazimi, discovered his infidelity and took drastic measures. In a moment of despair, she shot McNair twice in the chest before turning the gun on herself, tragically ending both their lives. Terry Allen Kath was an extraordinary musician and was the founding member of the legendary rock band Chicago. Also born and raised in the Windy City, he was not only a gifted guitarist, but also a talented singer and songwriter. Terry Allen Calf, Death by Stupidity. Calf enjoyed target shooting and by 1978 was regularly carrying guns. On January 23, 1978, at a party at the home of roadie and band technician Don Johnson, Calf began to play with his guns. He spun his unloaded 38 revolver on his finger, put it to his temple, and pulled the trigger. Johnson warned Calf several times to be careful. Kath picked up another pistol and, leaning back in a chair, said to Johnson, Don't worry about it. Look, the clip is not even in it. His last words were, What do you think I'm going to do? Blow my brains out? He died instantly from the gunshot at the age of 31, eight days before his 32nd birthday. Vernon Forrest was an American professional boxer who competed from 1992 to 2008. He held multiple world championships in two weight classes, including the WBC, IBF, 
Ring Magazine, and Lineal Welterweight between 2002 and 2003, and the WBC Super Welterweight title twice between 2007 and 2009. In a tragic incident that shook the sports world, Vernon Forrest, a renowned professional boxer, met an untimely demise in 2009. He was brutally murdered after being robbed at a gas station located in the Mechanicsville neighborhood of Atlanta, Georgia. Tara Correa McMullen was an American actress, known for her captivating portrayal of Graciela Reyes, a gang member, on the popular CBS TV series Judging Amy. In early 2005, 16-year-old Correa McMullen moved into her own apartment in Inglewood, California, and as art imitated life, she began dating a gang member 10 years her senior. On the evening of October 21st, 2005, she was shot to death by gang member Damian Watts. Dino Bravo had a fascinating career in the world of professional wrestling. During his career, Bravo competed in various promotions such as WWE, then known as WWF, and Stampede Wrestling. He was known for his powerlifting background and often showcased his strength inside the ring. Fans were captivated by his larger-than-life persona and memorable matches. Despite his success in the wrestling industry, Bravo's life took a dark turn. In 1993, he was found murdered at the age of 44 in his home in Laval, Quebec. The circumstances surrounding his death remain mysterious to this day. Oscar Natalio Ringo Bonavena, a legendary heavyweight professional boxer, was known for his rugged and wild swinging punches. Oscar earned the nickname Ringo due to his Beatles-style haircut. He is best remembered for his epic battles against two boxing icons, Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali. On May 22, 1976, heavyweight boxer Oscar Bonavina met a devastating end. At the young age of 33, he was shot dead by a security guard at the infamous Mustang Ranch brothel near Reno, Nevada. This unfortunate incident occurred as a result of a conflict that had arisen between Bonavina and the owner of the establishment. The world of music was left in shock when the talented French singer-songwriter Barbara Weldon's tragically passed away on stage during a festival performance. Known for her soulful voice and captivating lyrics, Weldon's had just released her debut studio album in February 2017. Barbara Weldon's Death by Electrocution Weldon's was on tour and was performing in the town of Gordon in southwest France for the festival Leo Ferre when she collapsed on stage at about midnight on the 19th of July 2017 and was pronounced dead of cardiac arrest. She was 35. An autopsy confirmed that she had been electrocuted. She normally performed barefoot, and her foot made contact with a defective piece of electrical equipment. Andres Escobar, a talented Colombian soccer player, had a promising career that unfortunately met a tragic end. He represented the Colombia national team in the 1994 FIFA World Cup. However, his name became synonymous with one fateful moment. During a match against the United States, Escobar scored a goal on his own team that ultimately contributed to Colombia's elimination from the tournament, and his murder is believed to be a direct result of this goal. Ten days after that fateful game, on the early morning of July 2, 1994, Andres Escobar was confronted by a group of men outside a club in his hometown, Medellin, the second largest city in Colombia. The men taunted Escobar for scoring on his own team, then one of the men shot Escobar six times. A man was arrested the next day and charged for the murder. Danny Cedrone was an American guitarist and band leader, best known for his work with Bill Haley in the Comets, recording the smash hit Rock Around the Clock in 1954. Rock Around the Clock was the first monster hit of rock and roll and the biggest selling rock and roll record of all time. Danny Cedrone, Death by Staircase. On June 17, 1954, 10 days after recording Rock Around the Clock, and three days before his 34th birthday, he died of a broken neck after tripping and falling down a staircase. Peter Savage was a prominent figure in alpine ski racing and was a member of the U.S. ski team on the World Cup circuit in the late 1960s. He was part of the 1968 Winter Olympics and truly made a name for himself as he claimed back-to-back -back titles as the pro ski racing champion in both 1971 and 1972. 
On Sunday, March 21, 1976, tragedy struck when professional skier Spider Savage was shot by his live-in girlfriend, singer-actress Claudine Longjay. The incident was described as an accidental shooting, but it led to a legal battle that captured public attention. Longjet was charged with murder and stood trial for her actions. However, the jury ultimately convicted her of negligent homicide instead. The sentencing resulted in a small fine and a 30-day jail term. Ivan Calderon Perez had an impressive career as a professional baseball outfielder. From 1984 to 1993, he played in Major League Baseball, MLB, for four different teams. His skills and contributions to the game were recognized when he was named an All-Star in 1991. On December 27, 2003, tragedy struck when Ivan Calderon Perez was shot multiple times in the head and back at Point Blank Range. This horrific incident took place after an argument at a bar in Loiza, Puerto Rico. Sadly, his murder remains unsolved to this day. Greg Hallman was a talented professional baseball outfielder who made a name for himself in the world of Major League Baseball, MLB. He showcased his skills as a member of the Seattle Mariners during the 2010 and 2011 seasons. In addition to his contributions to MLB, Hallman also represented the Dutch national team in the prestigious 2009 World Baseball Classic. On November 21, 2011, tragedy struck when Greg Hallman lost his life at the young age of 24. He died from blood loss in Rotterdam due to a laceration to his carotid artery. The circumstances surrounding his death were deeply unsettling, as it was revealed that Greg's own brother, Jason Hallman, was arrested for the murder. According to reports, the incident stemmed from an argument that erupted between Greg and Jason over loud music. This disagreement tragically escalated into a stabbing that ultimately claimed Greg's life. In a turn of events on August 30, 2012, a Dutch court formally acquitted Jason of the charges against him. The grounds for this acquittal were based on temporary insanity. Buddy Clark, an iconic American singer of the big band era. His popularity propelled him to great heights, especially in the late 1940s. After serving in World War II, Buddy Clark returned to the stage and quickly established himself as one of the nation's top singers and a household name. Buddy Clark, death by just plain bad luck. On Saturday, October 1st, 1949, hours after the 37-year-old had completed a Club 15 broadcast on CBS radio with the Andrews sisters, Clark joined five friends in renting a small plane to attend a college football game in Stanford, California. On the way back to Los Angeles after the game, the plane ran out of fuel, lost altitude, and crashed on Beverly Boulevard in West Los Angeles. Cornelius Johannes Corey Sanders, a renowned South African professional boxer who was active from 1989 to 2008, one of his most notable achievements came in 2003 when he claimed the WBO heavyweight title in a stunning victory against the formidable Vladimir Klitschko. In a tragic turn of events, Corey Sanders lost his life on the 23rd of September, 2012. He was fatally shot during a robbery at a restaurant while bravely shielding his 15-year-old daughter, who thankfully escaped unharmed. Jack Cassidy was an American actor, singer, and theater director known for his work in the theater, television, and films. He also received two Primetime Emmy Award nominations, and he was the father of teen idols David Cassidy and Sean Cassidy. Jack Cassidy, Death by Cigarette. In the early morning of December 12, 1976, Cassidy lit a cigarette and fell asleep on his Naga Hyde couch. Asleep, he dropped the cigarette, igniting the couch. By the time he was found, Cassidy needed to be identified by dental records. Brian Spencer was selected by the Toronto Maple Leafs in the fifth round of the 1969 NHL entry draft, 55th overall. He began his professional career with Toronto, and later joined the New York Islanders before ultimately being acquired by the Buffalo Sabres. On June 3, 1988, tragedy struck when Brian Spencer lost his life in a fatal shooting. The incident occurred in Riviera Beach, Florida, during a robbery that took a devastating turn following a drug deal gone wrong. Ola Brunkert was a member of ABBA's backing band during their heyday in the 1970s and early 80s, Brunkert's drumming skills provided the rhythmic foundation for countless ABBA classics, such as Dancing Queen, Mamma Mia, 
Waterloo, and many more. Ola Brunkert, death by glass door. Brunkert died after an accidental fall at the age of 61. Tripping while heading to the dining room, he hit his head against a glass door, shattering the glass and badly cutting himself in the neck. He managed to wrap a towel around his neck and leave the house to seek help, but collapsed and died in the garden. French actor Gaspard Ulliel, a rising star in the movie industry, he was best known for his remarkable portrayal of Hannibal Lecter in the film Hannibal Rising. Tragically, he had his life cut short at the young age of 37 due to a freak accident. Gaspard Ulliel, Death by Collision Skiing In a freak skiing accident on the 19th of January 2022 at the La Rosière Ski Resort, Ulliel left the top of a blue ski run. He collided with another skier and both fell to the ground. The other skier didn't suffer any injuries, but Ulliel didn't get up and was airlifted to the nearby Grenoble University Hospital Center, where he was pronounced dead. Frank Donald Goodish, better known by his ring name Bruiser Brody, was a legendary figure in the world of professional wrestling. Known for his hardcore brawling style, Brody's matches often left participants bloodied and audiences on the edge of their seats. Throughout his career, Brody became synonymous with an intense and gritty wrestling style that captivated fans around the world. While he may have had short runs in North American promotions due to his intolerance for underhanded tactics by wrestling promoters, he found great success in Japan, where he enjoyed lengthy and prosperous runs. In recognition of his contributions to the sport, Brody was posthumously inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2019. The death of professional wrestler Brody in 1988 remains a controversial and tragic event. Brody, whose real name was Frank Goodish, lost his life from stab wounds sustained backstage during a wrestling event in Puerto Rico. The man responsible for the attack was Jose Gonzalez, also known as Invader One. The trial that followed Gonzalez's actions resulted in his acquittal on the grounds of self-defense. However, there are claims that two key witnesses who could have potentially influenced the outcome were not properly summoned to testify until after the trial had concluded. At the time of his death, Bruiser Brody was only 42 years old. This untimely loss shook the wrestling community and left a lasting impact on those who knew him. The circumstances surrounding his death and the subsequent legal proceedings continue to be subjects of discussion and debate among fans and industry insiders alike. All right, let's dive into the fascinating career of Adolfo Bresciano, or as many wrestling fans know him, Dino Bravo. Back in the 1970s, Bravo kickstarted his journey in the wrestling world in Montreal. Little did he know that this would be the beginning of an incredible rise to stardom. Known for his incredible strength and charisma, Bravo quickly climbed the ranks and became one of Canada's top professional wrestling stars. He achieved numerous feats along the way, including an impressive six-time reign as the Canadian International Heavyweight Champion. Talk about dominance. But Bravo's journey didn't stop there. He later caught the attention of the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, now known as WWE, where he teamed up with Dominic DiNucci to form a formidable partnership. Together, they achieved greatness by winning the prestigious World Tag Team Championship. Tragically, Bravo's life would end soon. On March 10, 1993, a tragic incident occurred that shook the community. Bravo, at the age of 44, was found shot dead in his own home in Vimont, Laval, Quebec. The brutality of the crime was evident as he had been hit by a staggering 11 bullets to his head and torso. The circumstances surrounding his death are shrouded in mystery and speculation. It is widely believed that his alleged involvement in illegal cigarette smuggling may have played a significant role in his untimely demise. However, despite police investigations and efforts to uncover the truth, his murder remains unsolved to this day. Owen Hart, a cherished member of the legendary Hart family wrestling dynasty, left an indelible mark on the world of professional wrestling. As the youngest sibling among his seven wrestling brothers, Owen not only held his own, but soared to great heights in his career. With numerous accolades to his name, Owen was a force to be reckoned with in the ring. 
He claimed the title of one-time USWA Unified World Heavyweight Champion and held the prestigious WWF Intercontinental Championship twice. Additionally, he proudly donned the crown as the 1994 WWF King of the Ring. Owen's success extended beyond individual achievements. He proved himself as a formidable tag team wrestler, capturing the World Tag Team Championship four times alongside various partners. His star power helped him headline multiple pay-per-view events for the WWF. Not only was Owen a champion in terms of titles won, but he was also widely regarded as one of the company's best in-ring performers. His agility, technical prowess, and captivating charisma made him a fan favorite, but a tragic accident would soon claim his life. On May 23, 1999, tragedy struck the world of professional wrestling during a live WWF pay-per-view event called Over the Edge. Owen Hart was set to make a dramatic entrance by flying from the top of the Kemper Arena in Kansas City. However, something went horribly wrong. As Hart prepared for his descent, the harness he was wearing malfunctioned. A clasp gave way, and he plummeted 70 feet onto the ring ropes below. The impact was devastating and tragically severed his aorta, causing him to lose his life almost instantly. While this horrific incident did not make it to air, the audience of 16,000 people in attendance witnessed this heart-wrenching accident unfold before their eyes. The shock and sense of loss reverberated throughout both the wrestling community and fans worldwide. In the aftermath of this tragic mishap, Owen Hart's wife and children took legal action against the WWF, now WWE, seeking justice for their devastating loss. Eventually, they received an $18 million settlement as a result of their lawsuit. All right, folks, let's look into a wild true crime story that'll have your jaw on the floor. Back in 1981, a gruesome quadruple murder went down in the Laurel Canyon neighborhood of Los Angeles, and it's a real doozy. The victims were all linked to a gang of burglars and drug addicts, and they were brutally beaten to death with pipes in a townhouse. The kicker, porn star John Holmes, who was friends with the victims, was a suspect. Allegedly, Holmes and his friend Nash were involved in some shady business with the burglars and drug addicts, and things took a dark turn. As the investigation unfolded, the spotlight kept shifting between Holmes and Nash, with both of them denying any involvement. It was a real cat-and-mouse game, and the authorities were left scratching their heads, trying to piece together what really happened that fateful night. Ultimately, Holmes was tried for the murders, but was acquitted. However, the police never stopped believing that he and Nash were responsible for the Wonderland murders. In a tragic incident in 2012, Sammy Kane Kraft, the talented young star of the remake of Bad News Bears, lost her life in a car accident. She was just 21 years old when the car she was riding in collided with a semi-trailer and was subsequently struck by another vehicle. Despite being rushed to the hospital, Sammy could not be saved. All right, folks, we're about to dive into one of the most infamous murder cases in L.A. history, the mysterious death of Elizabeth Short, also known as the Black Dahlia. On January 15, 1947, Elizabeth's body was discovered cut in half and completely drained of blood in a vacant lot in the Limert Park neighborhood. The gruesome nature of the crime and the media's sensationalized coverage turned Elizabeth into the infamous legend known as the Black Dahlia. To this day, the case remains unsolved, with countless theories and speculations surrounding Elizabeth's brutal murder. On April 1, 1984, the world lost a true musical icon when legendary soul singer Marvin Gaye was tragically shot to death by his own father. The incident occurred at Gaye's parents' home in the West Adams neighborhood of Los Angeles after an argument between the two men escalated into a physical altercation. The following day, Marvin Gaye would have celebrated his 45th birthday. Susan Cabot was an acclaimed American film stage and television actress. Known for her memorable roles in Western films such as Tomahawk, 1951, The Duel at Silver Creek, 1952, and Gunsmoke, 1953, Cabot established herself as a prominent figure in the entertainment industry of the time. On December 10th, 1986, Cabot's 22-year-old son bludgeoned her to death in her home in the Encino neighborhood of Los Angeles with a weightlifting bar. He was charged with second-degree murder. 
a judge convicted her son of not murder but involuntary manslaughter in the 1986 bludgeoning death of his mother. He received only three years probation on November 28, 1989 and walked out of court a free man. All right, folks, let's dive into a dark chapter of music history that still sends chills down my spine. On February 3, 2003, the legendary music producer Phil Spector committed a heinous act. He shot and killed actress Lana Clarkson in his own home in Alhambra, California. Alhambra is a city in the San Gabriel Valley, just outside of Los Angeles, where Spector lived in a massive mansion. And on that fateful night, Clarkson, who had met Spectre earlier that evening, ended up losing her life at the hands of this renowned but troubled individual. After a highly publicized trial, Spectre was sentenced to 19 years to life in prison for the murder. And you know what they say? The wheels of justice turn slowly, but they do turn. Spectre ended up passing away in prison just a few years ago. Rob Knox a talented young actor who brought the character of Marcus Belby to life in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince and had just signed a lucrative contract to appear in its sequel, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, had a promising future ahead. Unfortunately, tragedy struck when he lost his life at the age of 18. On that fateful day, May 24, 2008, Rob's bravery and love for his family led him to intervene in a fight outside the Metro Bar in Sidcup, Southeast London. His younger brother, Jamie, was being threatened by a man armed with two kitchen knives. In an act of selflessness, Rob stepped in to protect Jamie, but tragically ended up losing his own life. Okay, let's look into the mysterious circumstances surrounding the tragic death of the legendary Sam Cooke on that fateful night of December 11th, 1964. The brilliant musician was gunned down at the Hacienda Motel, supposedly by the motel manager who claimed Cook had attacked her. But hold on, because there's a lot more to this story than meets the eye. For starters, Cook had a woman with him at the motel that night who conveniently left with most of his clothing. Hmm, sounds a bit fishy, doesn't it? Now, the official story may be what's on the books, but a lot of people just aren't buying it. There's a whole lot of strangeness surrounding the events of that night, and some folks are convinced that the real truth has been buried. Nowadays, you can find a humble grocery store standing where the Hacienda Motel once stood, but the mystery surrounding Sam Cooke's untimely demise lives on. It's the kind of story that makes you wonder what really happened behind closed doors that fateful night. Carl Alfalfa Switzer was an American child actor best known for his role as Alfalfa in the popular Our Gang comedy series. Born on August 7, 1927 in Paris, Illinois, Switzer began his acting career at a young age and quickly gained recognition for his portrayal of the lovable and mischievous Alfalfa. Switzer's iconic character became one of the most beloved members of the Our Gang cast. His signature hairstyle, with a cowlick sticking up in the front, became synonymous with his character's quirky personality. Switzer's comedic timing and natural talent made him a fan favorite. Outside of his work in Our Gang, Switzer also appeared in other films and television shows throughout his career. However, he struggled to transition into adult roles and found it challenging to escape being typecast as Alfalfa. In a dispute over money with a man named Bud Stilt, Switzer and another man, Jack Piet, went to his home to collect. The two arrived at Stilt's home. Stilt shared the home with his wife, Rita Corrigan, and his stepchildren. Switzer and Piot intended to demand money from Stilt's. Though differing accounts of the event exist, all agree that Stilts was struck over the left side of his head with a glass clock. He later retreated to his room to retrieve a gun, which Switzer wrestled him for. Their struggle caused the gun to discharge and almost shot Tom Corrigan, Stilts's 14-year-old stepson. In the aftermath, Stilts's account of the event was one of self-defense, testifying that Switzer had banged on his front door, yelling, let me in or I'll kick in the door. The threat was followed by a struggle that began with one of the men, Switzer or Piot, striking Stilts with the clock. This prompted Stilts to retrieve his firearm, which Switzer grabbed for. The gun discharged accidentally, almost shooting Corrigan. Switzer then, according to Stilts, threatened him with a knife and yelled, I'm going to kill you. 
Stilts fired and shot Switzer in the groin, damaging an artery that caused massive internal bleeding. Switzer was dead by the time he arrived at the hospital. Tom Corrigan, the 14-year-old stepson's account, differed significantly from his stepfather's. He told investigators that Stilts shot Switzer as he and Piet were leaving. After the gun's accidental discharge that almost hit Corrigan, Switzer turned to Piot and said they needed to leave. The two were headed for the door when Stilts then fired the fatal shot. He also said Switzer never drew a knife as Stilts had claimed he had. Corrigan was never called to testify at the coroner's inquest and Stilts testified in his own favor. His testimony was taken to be truthful despite physical evidence that contradicted his account and his past perjury conviction. He was not charged as based on his testimony. It was ruled self-defense. Years later, Corrigan, the stepson, stood by what he told officers had happened that night and said his stepfather did not have to kill Switzer. Okay, let's talk about the one and only notorious B.I.G. He was a true king of the mic, a once-in-a-generation talent who left an indelible mark on the world of hip-hop. Back in 97, this rap legend was gunned down in a drive-by shooting outside the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. It was a tragic end to a life that was just getting started. To this day, the murder remains unsolved, leaving fans and hip-hop heads alike wondering what could have been. Judith Barcy, a talented American child actress. Starting her career in television, she made appearances in commercials, TV series, and even starred in the 1987 film Jaws, the Revenge, but it was her voice acting that truly showcased her talent. Judith provided the voices of beloved characters like Ducky in The Land Before Time and Anne Marie in All Dogs Go to Heaven. Her performances brought joy to countless viewers, both young and old. Sadly, Judith's life was tragically cut short at a young age. In July 1988, she and her mother Maria fell victim to a heart wrenching double murder committed by her own father, Josef Barsi. He then took his own life, leaving behind a devastating loss and many unanswered questions. Harry O'Connor, a name synonymous with skydiving and adrenaline-fueled stunts, he carved a legendary career out of his fascination for parachuting from airplanes. From the 90s films The Perfect Storm to Charlie's Angels and Tomorrow Never Dies, O'Connor's credits as a stuntman and aerial coordinator are nothing short of impressive. Driven by an unwavering passion for skydiving, O'Connor transformed his love for the sport into a thriving profession. His daring feats and meticulous coordination left audiences in awe as he seamlessly blended the world of film and extreme sports together. In 2002, our fearless stuntman found himself in the beautiful city of Prague, Czech Republic, for the filming of the action-packed Vin Diesel film. Amongst the many daring stunts he performed, one stood out as particularly demanding. Picture this. O'Connor would strap himself into a parasail and be pulled by a speedboat along the majestic Vltava River. But here's where it gets intense. His mission was to navigate under the iconic Palaki Bridge with mere inches to spare. As if that wasn't enough, he had to gracefully descend onto a submarine while his parachute crashed dramatically against the bridge railing. This heart-pounding feat was no easy task, but O'Connor executed it flawlessly time and time again. His expertise and precision allowed him to capture this jaw-dropping scene with absolute perfection, but he insisted on one more take. Harry O'Connor met a tragic end when his last attempt went awry, resulting in a fatal collision with one of the bridge's stone pillars. At just 45 years old, his life was cut short in a heartbreaking manner. All right, folks. I'm about to dive into the wild and twisted tale of one of America's most notorious mobsters, Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. This guy was the epitome of the ruthless gangster, climbing his way up the ranks through a deadly combination of cunning and brute force. Now, on June 20th, 1947, Bugsy met a rather violent end when he was shot dead by a sniper while sitting in the home of his mistress, Virginia Hill, in Beverly Hills. To this day, the crime remains unsolved, leaving us all to ponder the mystery surrounding his untimely demise. Many believe Bugsy's murder was a direct result of the soaring costs of the Flamingo Hotel he had recently completed in Las Vegas. The project had become a financial disaster, and some think his partners in crime decided to take him out to recoup their losses. 
Others speculate that Virginia Hill herself was embezzling money, which ultimately led to Bugsy's downfall. Regardless of the specifics, one thing's for sure. Bugsy Siegel lived and died by the sword, leaving behind a legacy of violence, greed, and unanswered questions. It's a cautionary tale of the dangers of the mob life and a reminder that even the most powerful can fall victim to their own hubris. In 1984, Jan Eric Hexum was a rising star in the entertainment industry with a promising career ahead of him. At just 26 years old, he had already made a name for himself through his roles in popular television series such as Voyagers and Cover Up. However, tragedy struck when a seemingly harmless joke took a devastating turn. Hexum's life was cut short by an accident that occurred on the set of Cover Up. While waiting for filming to resume, he playfully picked up a prop gun loaded with blanks and jokingly pointed it at his head. Unbeknownst to him, the force of firing the blank cartridge at close range caused severe trauma to his skull. This unfortunate incident serves as a reminder of the dangers that can arise from even seemingly innocuous actions. It is a tragic reminder that life can be fragile and unpredictable. Despite his promising talent and undeniable charisma, Hexum's life was tragically cut short on October 18, 1984, by an ill-fated joke gone horribly wrong. Kelsey Grammer, widely known for his iconic role as Dr. Fraser Crane, has faced immense tragedy in his personal life. At the tender age of 13, Kelsey experienced the devastating loss of his father, who was shot and killed by a mentally ill man named Arthur Niles. Is anyone thinking what I'm thinking? The circumstances surrounding this tragic event remain unknown. Sadly, there's more. When he was just 20 years old, his sister Karen was also murdered at the age of 18, Laura Branigan. Laura Branigan was a powerhouse vocalist who rose to fame in the early 80s with her hit single, Gloria. Her soaring vocals and undeniable charisma made her a household name, and she quickly became a staple on the pop charts. However, as the years went by, Branigan's popularity began to wane, and she faded from the public eye. What many people don't realize is that Laura Branigan passed away in 2004 at the age of 52, not 47 as was widely reported at the time. Her death came as a shock to her fans. She had been suffering from headaches in the weeks leading up to her death and sadly died in her sleep from a brain aneurysm. Let's talk about Kyle David Smain, the American freestyle skier who made quite a name for himself in the world of skiing. In 2015, he achieved a remarkable feat by winning a gold medal in halfpipe at the FIS Freestyle Ski and Snowboarding World Championships. Kyle David Smain's talent and dedication were evident as he soared through the air, executing incredible tricks and maneuvers with precision. His passion for freestyle skiing propelled him to reach new heights and become a force to be reckoned with in the sport. On January 29, 2023, Tragedy struck on Mount Norikura in Nagano, Japan. Smain was in Nagano for a business trip promoting Icon Pass and Nagano Tourism when he met with an unfortunate fate while enjoying some freestyle skiing on the last day of his trip. He was caught in an avalanche and passed away. He was 31 years old. 